This is a micro lecture about item difficulty, the discriminatory power of items, vulnerability for guessing, although I will not pay a lot of attention to that topic, and the idea that you measure one dimension only in most IRT models, although you, have, you can and have to check for the idea that there are more dimensions. The idea of IRT, item response theory, is that we relate items to latent traits. We create a model, an IRT model, and use the data to test that model. We then take into account the fact that items can be more or less difficult, that the items can be more or less discriminatory, and if we use closed questions, say questions with four answering possibilities only, the possibility that they are vulnerable for guessing. Underlying item response theory is often the assumption that we are measuring one trait only, but you have to check for that. So let me give you a simple example. Suppose there is a test in which knowledge about a topic is measured using open-ended questions. This means that there is no guessing possible. Suppose that we, answer, that we ask the respondent to answer this question, 30 plus 1, and then the second item, 30 plus 16, 30 plus 32, and 33 plus 38. Now, you can imagine that the first question is a bit more simple than the last one. The last one is the most difficult question in these four. So we can create a model in which we make the prediction that the items are ordered like this, and we can then test whether this is true. And we can also use these items to locate individuals. How smart are they? How good are they at answering these questions? In a lot of tests, we're dealing with dichotomous items. Dichotomous items have only two values, correct and incorrect, yes and no. And since we're dealing with dichotomous items, we have to transform these items into something we can handle. Now we do that by transforming dichotomous items into the natural logarithm of the odds. Now this is something difficult maybe, but you have to imagine the following. Suppose that we've got an item which is between either a zero or a one. Then we can also look at that item as the percentage of people that answer a question correctly. And then we take the odds of that value. We take the p divided by one minus p. And we finally take the log, the natural logarithm of these odds. Now to give a few examples what that means, give you another one. Suppose that 50% of the people answer the questions correctly. Then, of course, we know that the rest answer the question incorrectly. P divided by its complement, which is the same, is of course 1. And the natural logarithm of 1 is 0. That's exactly the middle point, as we will see later in this micro lecture. Suppose that the question is answered correctly by 95% of the people and only 5% answers the question incorrectly. Then the p-value is 0.95, the odds are 19, which is a huge number, and the log odds, so the natural logarithm of 19, is 2.94. And finally, if the p-value approximates 1, so it's almost everyone answers the question correctly, then the odds move to infinity and the log odds move to infinity as well. Now we have transformed a sim simple dichotomous variable by transforming it uh, using the idea of the log odds into something which lies between minus infinity and infinity, and we can try to predict the log odds using a simple linear model. Okay, here is the linear equation. The log odds are predicted by the theta, so the latent variable, and some constant. Now, it doesn't look like a simple linear equation, but it actually is. This is just the way it is presented in IRT, because it works better, as I will explain in this micro lecture. Transforming this relationship is quite simple. This is the transformation. We multiply b1 and b0, and that's then the constant of the simple linear equation, and b1 minus uh, times theta is the rest, so it's the b1 is then simply the intercept of the relationship. Okay, so this is a linear relationship that we try to use in predicting the log odds. What do the 
components mean here? Theta is again the latent trait, the thing we try to measure using the various items. This one is called difficulty. And the last one is called the discrimination parameter. In our model, we, we, we try to make predictions about the discrimination and the difficulty of a specific item that is measuring a specific latent trait. Now, this is the idea that I'll, that I'll try to explain using some simple graphs. So, what does the relationship between a latent trait and an item look like? A latent trait is normally seen as something between minus infinity and plus infinity, and the middle point is zero. Okay. The difficulty of an item is the position where the odds of answering a question correct is one. So 50% answers to question correct, and 50% answers to question incorrectly. There is no guessing here. Okay, so the odds is one, and the difficulty refers to that specific position. Now, let us assume that the difficulty of a specific item is zero. Okay, what does it look like? Now, here we have a latent trait at the bottom, which is between minus infinity and plus infinity, but we only present the part between minus 50 and plus 50. And we look at what happens if an individual is positioned exactly in the middle of that scale. What does it mean? Well, for a specific item, because this uh, relationship describes an item, 50% that there is a chance of uh, answering that specific item correctly, or 50%. Okay, you see it here. That's for the difficulty of zero. Now, let's take a simpler item. Okay, that will look like this. So let's assume a difficulty of minus 20. So we look at the latent trait. The latent trait says, okay, minus 20. Now the item positioned here is answered correctly by exactly 50% of the individuals. Okay, you can see that here. Now let's move to a third example. This is an item which is called more difficult. It has a difficulty of 30, plus 30. What does it mean? Well, if you are at position 30 of the latent trait, so suppose you're very good at answering mathematical questions, and we look at the group that is positioned exactly there, then 50% of that group answers did this item correctly. Or, in other words, if you are an individual at that specific position, so you're pretty bright, then you have a 50% chance of answering that question correctly. Look to the left. So if you're not very good at mathematics here, then the chance that you answer this question correctly is zero, or at least almost zero. Of course, items can be too difficult. Okay, imagine this one. It's answered correctly by almost no one. Only if you are at the very, very right side of the scale, you can be expected to answer the question correctly, but then only 50% answers that question correctly. In Rush models, named after the Danish mathematician Georg Rush, the assumption is made that items in some test only differ with regard to their difficulty. The ability of the student, of course, is then included, because we not only uh, uh, analyze items, but also respondents. The relationship between a latent trait and item can also be modeled in a more complex way. We can include an extra parameter. Discrimination of an item is the extent to which the latent trait is predicting whether a correct answer is given. Let's assume that the difficulty is zero, but the discrimination of the item can be different. So the relationship looks like this. Okay, we again see that people with a low score on the latent trait do not answer the question correctly, at least not very frequently. And at the other end of the latent um, uh, scale, 0.50, almost everyone answers this item correctly. And in the middle, 50% answers the question correctly because discrimination was taken to be zero. But compare it with this item, which has exactly the same um, uh, difficulty. But you can also see that we make a better prediction. We can, if we know the position of, on the latent trait, we can predict whether a person answers the question correctly or not. Look at the position minus 12. 
most respondents will answer this question incorrectly. The second item, however, more people will answer the question correctly. And the opposite is true at the other side of the scale. So we prefer, normally, items that have a large discriminatory power. And we need to take that into account when checking the quality of items. So some items discriminate less than others. This one discriminates almost perfectly well. In two parameter models, both the discrimination and the difficulty are included. So that's why they're called two parameter models. And of course, you not only measure the difficulty and the discrimination of the items, you do not only include these elements in the model, but also the trait of the respondent. A third characteristic is guessing. Sometimes guessing plays a role in items. For example, in multiple choice questions. With four answering possibilities of an item, the chance of guessing correctly is 0.25. This is included in three PL models with three parameters, difficulty, discrimination, and guessing. What does it look like? Well, like this. If you do not know anything about the topic you're interested in, then you still have a chance of 0.25 to answer the question correctly. So that's why it does not move to zero on the left-hand side. In this micro lecture, you've learned about item difficulty playing a role in rush models, the discriminatory power of items, and you learned a little bit about the vulnerability for guessing. Underlying these models is always the idea that you are measuring one single latent trait, 